Hi everyone, Jaffe here, and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days, a series of puzzles which will take us around the entire world. Today's episode is number three out of TBD, and it's called Mazed and Confused. So, as always, how this works is I will read you the rules of the, uh, explain you the rules of the puzzle and solve it for you step by step. Explain uh, how it could be solved. If you do want to try it out yourself first, the link is in the description. It's on Puzzling Stack Exchange, and you can try it out yourself before uh, I give you the answers. So, uh, as always, we can start by looking at the preamble. See what Gladys has written us this time. So here is the message from Gladys. Dear Puzzling, Today I have admired the natural beauty of a paradise island and seen sand dunes glistening in the sun in all the colors of the rainbow. So it sounds like we are, as the final answer, we are looking for an island which has sand dunes. And then it goes on to explain the rules. So the numbers outside the grid. You see we have a grid here and then we have some clues below the grid. So the numbers outside the grid form a two-color nonogram. Shade some cells in the grid in black and red so that the numbers before each row and column correctly describe the lengths of stretches of cell cells shaded in that color, in order. Two stretches shaded in different colors can touch, but stretches of cells shaded in the same color must be separated by an unshaded cell. Now, what does that all mean? Let's open up an editable grid, and you can open it here under the grid where you have a penpa link. It takes you to the same same place that I'm looking at now. So we can see uh, we have these numbers here. Columns have numbers and rows. So for example, this 6-1 simply means that there's going to be oops, I have the wrong color. Uh, six cells somewhere shaded, uh, six successive cells, and then there's going to be some gap, and then there's going to be a one cell stretch. So this one can't be here, because this would be a 7 and not a 6. And uh, yeah, so that's how these uh, these numbers work. And when there are uh, different colors involved, so for example this 1, 3, 1, we have 3 in black, and then we could have uh, the red here. You don't need a gap here, because uh, it's a different color. So this would still count as 1 in red, 3 in black. And in red, for example. So those are just the basic rules of nonograms. Uh, but let's read the rest of the preamble before we start on with the nonogram. So uh, the answers to the cryptic clues, when ordered correctly, form a word chain. Find the cor uh, find the shortest path through the maze and place the answers on the path in the correct order, each sharing one letter with the preceding word. Can you guess where I am? Love, Gladys. Now, what is this word chain business? I have a, a notepad open in this separate corner, so let's just give you some examples. So if we have one and eight as the, as the answers, so we need to input these into the grid somewhere and the nonogram will tell you tell us where exactly, but we don't know yet. But they have to share one letter. So we put them one after another, and they both share this E. So the last letter uh, also works as the first letter of the, of the next word. And the, the nonogram will form some kind of maze. And you see we have these uh, arrows here pointing at where the maze starts and ends. So, it looks like we have a, a couple of sort of sub-puzzles. There's the nonogram, then there's the cryptic clues that we have to solve. We have to put them in order, and then we have to solve this maze. And uh, after that, we also have to figure out where to find the, uh, the final answer. So let's start with the nonogram, uh, open up this uh, editable grid, and see what we can figure out there. Here we are. Uh, sorry about this scrolling. I had tried to make it 
on one screen but it was too small to read so we have to we're going to have to scroll up and down a little bit i don't think it'll be a, a huge deal it didn't read on the screen so how to solve nanograms well um if you if we look at the rows here some of them have a lot of stuff and some have very little what what is going to be the best place to start well if we look at this one which in it which is an extreme example well, this has a lot of options. Oops, I have the wrong color here. So uh, one could be here, it could be here. It, in fact, it has 12 options, this one, because it's a 12 by 12 grid. So it's not going to be the place to start. If there was a, um, a row that had no numbers, then we could fill that in. And I'm using this light green, by the way, to indicate a cell that cannot be shaded. Uh, then we could just fill that in, because none of the cells could be shaded. But we don't have those. and the columns also all have numbers so if you take an uh, extreme example in the other direction if we had a 12 we could just fill that in like this because that's the only way to make a 12 now the same is true of uh, some of these which all uh, which sum up to 12 so you have to take into account the 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 empties that you need and the shaded cells that you need so for example this one three uh, the earliest it can appear is like this with a with an unshaded cell here but it can also appear here so like and any of the in between uh, possibilities are fine as well so that's not very restricted but things where the sum is really high are restricted like this is 10 shaded cells and you need two unshaded cells so, so there's only uh, that's already 12 cells, so you you can't you don't have any wiggle room here. So it's going to be three, then one space, and then six, and then one, and we can just fill this in because you uh, you can't move either of these stretches anywhere without getting off the grid. So we already have some shaded cells. Now let's look at columns. Do we have some columns where it's a really high sum here? For example, this. This has uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3, that's 9, and we need 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 unshaded cells. So that would be 9 plus 4 is 13 by my math. Am I wrong somehow? Let's see. 2, 1, 3, 1, and 2. I'm just, I thought this was 12 by 12. Let's just check. No, this is actually 13. So yeah, I, I actually was wrong there. So 13 is the number of rows here. So this fills the 13. How did I think this was 12? Okay. But uh, let's see. 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay, so horizontally it's 12 and vertically it's 13. That's my bad there. Now, now that we have two, one column and one row, uh, it's easy to start with uh, start looking at the like the crossing rows and columns. But let's let's um, stop there for a minute and uh, note that we have two colors here, and note that we have very few reds here. So maybe it's important to look at where reds can go. So you see here we have reds, and then none of these rows have reds, and the last row has reds. So there are only two rows where reds can go. Well, that is actually helpful, because this column has two reds, so we know which rows those go. This has two reds, and this has two reds. So in all of those cases, there are only two rows that can have reds, so we can put the reds on those. On those rows. Okay, so we could, in fact, just put in the reds without, without even without these having these blacks in the grid. You can just fill in the reds because they're so restricted. Only two rows where they can be, and only three columns, and you need six of them, so you have to fill all all six. Okay, how about let's look at this first row then, because now we need a three, uh, we need three black cells in between here. 
So it's going to be this three or this three. What's common between those? These two have to be filled in either way. Whichever way you fill the three, these are going to be filled. Now after the second red, we have one. So this has to have a gap now. And in fact, uh, the next one, next number is red, so all of these are going to be empty. So one red, that's this one here. One black, that's this one. One red, and we're not finished. We need one more in, in black, and there's only one place to put it. Now that we have shaded cells uh, in the in the first row, so these uh, this sort of perimeter is very important in nanograms because once you have a shaded cell here, you know which uh, which length of stretch it, it it is. So you need it, you know its length and you know where it starts. So you can immediately feel this is two, and it's going to be like this. Uh, that's not same is not true of uh, let's say this one because it's in the middle, so it could be part of this one or part of this three. We don't know. We can't just fill it in as one because it could be a three. But from the from the border on, we can count. This is two and then an empty. And then since this now has an empty next to it, it can only grow in this side, on this side. So it has to be a two. So two, then two. So we can fill that in as well. Uh, let's let's see if this is restricted. Do we have room room for? Uh, we don't have any, any wiggle room here. If we put one, one and three, there's only one way to put them. Uh, so yeah, one, three and one. Sorry. So in fact, this could just be filled in as well. Can't move this three anywhere without hitting the ones. Now, then this was part of a one, so we can put an em empty here, and this is a one now. Seeing it, you can't fit three ones here. This can't be part of the four, and there's no room for a four anyway. So this has to be a one. This doesn't have to be empty. It could be the one here. We don't know which one, one of these ones it is. This doesn't have to be part uh, one of the ones because we could have a one here, one here, and this could be part of the four. But it could be one because there's room for the four here. Okay, what about this last column then? Now we know this is part of the two, so we can fill that in. That's two, then empty, and then we know now that this is part of the five, so we can fill in five here, and this is an empty one. And now the remaining one goes somewhere here, but we don't know where. Uh, now that we have these uh, these in the rightmost column, we can just grow these the appropriate amount uh, in in this direction. So this is part of a one, so that's an empty. This is part of a two, so that's two, and then an empty. This is part of a one, so that's empty. And this is part of a six, so this is going to be helpful because we have to fill in six, and it's the only number, so there can't be any shaded cells here. Okay, now let's look at where the three can go on this row here. So this is the one, then we need a three and a one. Now the three could be part of this, with the one here, or it could be here. But if it's here, then uh, these are all ones. We can't have a two on this column. So in fact, we know this is empty. We know this is empty because these have to be ones. So the three can only fit here. Well, it can't grow in this side because we need a one here. So three has to go there. And we already have the remaining one, so these are empty. So now we have a two in the first column, and two is the maximum that any stretch can be on the first column, so we can just put empties on both sides. We need a one in black before the two, and there's only one place to put it, so it's here. Um, what else do we need on the first column? So one in red, one in black, two in black, then we need one in black and two in black. One could be here and two somewhere here, or it could be one here and then two here. So uh, we don't actually know. Uh, let's see, how about this six one? Because we already have the one here. These both have to be part of the six, so we can, we can join them. That is now five cells, so the six can stretch here or here, but these remaining ones can't be part of the six. Um, 
So it could go, still go either way, two options for the 6th there. Um, let's look at, maybe look at these columns that only have ones. So all of these columns that only have ones, we can put empties on both sides because you can't have a stretch bigger than one. So one, one, this has to be empty. This only has ones, so this has to be empty and this has to be empty. This only has, column only has ones, so this has to be empty and this has to be empty. This one also, all ones, so empty, empty. Now this has a, a two here. Could this be the two? We would need four ones, so that there could be a one here. That's the second one. This can't be, uh, I mean, th this has to be a one. Because we only have room for two, two ones here, not four. So this is a one, so we, we can surround it with empties. This column is all ones, but we remember we don't uh, fill in the empty here, because this could be black, one red, one black. But uh, this is one, this is one. Yeah, and we need how many more? We have two blacks and we need two more. So one could be here, one could be here, or even two could be here. So uh, we don't know about that yet. How about this column now? Uh, we need a three, and obviously three can't go here, can't go here. That's the only place a three can go. Now we have uh, an empty here, and this has to be a six, so it's now five. We can fill that in as well. Um, what about, still don't know about this one, actually. It could be any of these four cells from the looks of it. Um, how about this 3-1? This clearly has to be part of the 3, because there's no way to feed a 3 before it. So it could be like this, or like this, but it can't stretch all the way here, because putting a 1 here would make this a 4. So it has to go at least here, and then one of these options. And the 1 has two options as well. So this being filled means now we have 1, 2, and 3 ones. And that is all we need, so uh, we can't have anything else here in the column. This now, uh, this could be part of one, and then the six would be here. Or this could be one here, and then this would be part of the six. Both are, are still possible. Uh, what do we need in the first column? One, two, in black, and then another one, two. Well, now we only have four four cells remaining, so one, two goes like this. Only way to put one, two in in four cells. So that's the three. One could still be in either of those. That's the one here. And now this is part of the six. And uh, whichever way it goes, it's going to fill, if we start from here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's actually what it's going to be, because we need a, need a one here, and only one place to put the one, so the remaining has to be the six. Now then, um, this had one three. Okay, we can feel it. This, this has to be part of the three. There is no two in the column. So that's a three. We need a one before it. That fills in this three, by the way. And then uh, one three, one. Now this has to be part of the three then. So it has to go here, at least. Even if it was here, if it, was here it would still feel, fit in, uh, fill in this. Can't go here because we need a one more. We need one more and we can't put a one here. So three is like this and one is here. Now, on this row, we have three one. So the remaining ones are empty. In this row, we have one. And then the three is going to be here. And then these are empty. And it's, oh, and we got the one actually as well. So it's looking like it's almost solved. Now we had the one, which was the only shaded cell in this row. So we can empty out the, the others. And then let's look at, oh, let's look at the final row here. So we need a three between these two reds. So that's going to be the three. Then we need a one, that's empty and another one, but we don't know which one that is. And then after the last red, there's nothing, so this is empty. How about, does this empty do something for us? No, no it doesn't. Actually, we already knew that was empty, because 2, 5, and 1 have already been shaded, so these are empty. 
what about this cell? We have all ones in the in the column, so it can't be like this. It has to be empty. In this row now we have one, two, and two. This is the one. This is part of the two. And the remaining two can be here or here. But either way, this is going to be shaded. And now this is going to be a part of the two here. So we need uh, four ones, one, one, one. So we need a fourth one. That's the fourth one. And we need a two here. So that's the two. And now we know uh, we needed two ones between these. So that's empty. That's the two ones, two black ones. Now, how to disambiguate these twos then? Let's see. How many ones do we have between these reds? We need three and we have one, two, three. So these are both empty. So this two extends this way. That's empty. And that's the two field. Now only a couple of cells left. We need three ones. One, one, one. That's empty. And we have four cells left. So that's the four. And let's just check these. So five ones. One, two, three, four, five. And this one had four ones between the reds. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that is the field nonogram. And uh, it does fill, uh, it does form a maze, if you look at it. And uh, we actually had the, had the start and end points in the other, in the other grid. It is not in the salt grid, but in here we see that we start from the one and end in the one six one. So basically, so this would be the starting point and this would be the end point. Okay, so we have a maze. We have to fill it with words. Now, to get the words, we need to solve the cryptic clues. So let's do this. For, uh, let's do that next. Scroll down. We have nine cryptic clues this time. So let's see what we have. I'll just empty my notepad here. We'll fill in the the answers answers here. So first up, now the first cryptic clue. Bob's left air conditioning. Uh, air conditioner running, getting meat served for breakfast. Now, again, we can start looking at words that might be wordplay indicators here. So left can mean several things, but some things left could be the leftmost letter of this Bob. This could be this B. Um, getting something getting something could be something put inside the other thing or it could could be a connector that uh, this uh, you do this wordplay getting the answer so that would mean the answer would be meat served for breakfast question mark now air conditioner has a common abbreviation that's ac if it's bob's left that's b a c five letters meaning meat served for breakfast well, that sounds very promising, doesn't it? Because bacon is often served for breakfast. So that would have the B for Bob's left. It would have AC for air conditioner. And if an appliance is running, it's on. So on, it comes from this. So the first answer is bacon. Let's do the second one then. Uh, celebration is close upon crossing a river on the Welsh border. Now, um, close again can be it is uh, something is near something, it is next to it. Um, something crossing something. So if a word is crossing another, it is uh, on both sides, so it is surrounding that word. A river can be abbreviated R, or this could be a river on the Welsh border. Well, there is a river on the Welsh border called the Y, spelled like this. So if we have uh, 
Uh, so this is a very uh, short word that uh, could be part of a, a larger word. So if we put y, if it's crossed by something, so we put something on both sides, and we would need a word, for, or a word of three letters and a word of four letters, and the definition would be celebration. Well, if I put a space here, and we try to find a word for why, a uh, word for, sorry, a word for close that crosses this Y. Well, close, if you're close, you're near. And if we put N E A R here, we get New Year, which is a celebration. So near crosses this Y, and we get New Year. Uh, just to remove the space because we're going to have to uh, enter this into the grid without the spaces. Um, okay, number three. Clean underwater vessel transporting cargoes heading right. Okay, so something transporting something. If uh, something is transporting another thing, the other thing is inside. Uh, inside the thing that is doing the transporting. Heading is an indicator as well. Heading can be uh, a word's heading is the first letter. So cargo's heading could be C. And right can be the letter R. It's an abbreviation for right. So if something is transporting C R, we would need a five letter word and then the uh, definition would be clean. Now, can we come up with an underwater vessel for three letters? Well, a sub is an underwater vessel. We put the CR inside and we get scrub, which is to clean as a verb. So that's three answers. Um, then let's look at four. Clergyman Paul was quoted as saying, the British are coming near North Dakota. Well, that is not a real quote. And uh, you can usually ignore things like uh, these quotes, quotes and uh, punctuation when passing the cryptic clue. So, in fact, this is one unit is Paul who was quoted as saying, the British are coming. And it ends here, and the rest is for, uh, part of another unit. So, if you look up Paul, who was quoted as saying British are coming, that would must Paul Revere, spelled like this. So, we need two more letters. Near this Revere, we put North Dakota. Well, US states have two letters uh, abbreviations, so. North Dakota is ND, and if we put that near Revere, we get reverend, and a reverend is a clergyman, so this is the definition there. Let's go to five. And by the way, this is not a crossword, so you have to get the answers to all of these to be able to continue to the next step. So it's not like you get help from the grid in any way, unfortunately. So we are going to have to solve these sort of cold without knowing anything else about the, the answers. So, number five. Daughter schooling me for university, showing commitment. Now, daughter can be abbreviated D. Uh, I think it's from obituaries or something. D, D, uh, D full stop. It's daughter. Uh, and um, something for something is um, sort of wordplay that replaces one letter with another. Um, we didn't actually quite have the exact thing in in the tutorial. We had like letter, letter swapping, but uh, letters replacing, replacing other letters is uh, so something for another thing. So let's see how this goes. Schooling. We need a word for schooling, where we can put a word for me instead of a word for university. And that shows the answer, which is commitment. 
Now, the daughter is today, and the schooling is uh, education. Your schooling is education. Now, university is abbreviated U, so we take that out and we put instead a word for me. So put I here, and we get dedication, which means commitment. Um, let's see number six then. English philosopher John essentially vaporized secure compartment. Now, um, essentially here can mean uh, a hidden word, but that would be, well, probably wouldn't be, this wouldn't be the definition, vaporized secure compartment, and you can't hide six letters in these words anyway, because this is longer than six words, this middle word. Essentially can indicate another thing, and that is uh, taking the essential part of a word, or the central part, the central letters, or letter. So vaporized is uh, nine letters, so we can take the central letter here, the R, would be essentially vaporized, would be the R. Now can we come up with an English philosopher John, five letters, where we can put an R, after it to get a secure compartment. When John Locke was English, and with an R, it's a locker, a secure compartment. Next up, number seven. Uh, mass for the dead moor. NATO has them signed regularly. Well, this should stand out immediately. M. Probably important that it's not them. So either using the letters EM somehow, or something weird going on, because you wouldn't usually put M like this. Also, what probably should stand out is this very common uh, sort of indicator, regularly. So taking regular letters, so we would be looking at S, G, E, or I, N, D. And something has something, it could be like... A, the word NATO has inside it regular letters from these. But in fact, this is simpler than that. We can simply look at the regular letters from all of these words. So we need 10 letters, and this is, uh, is this, is this 24, 11, 13, this is 19. So the even letters would be 10, and the, uh, sorry, the odd letters would be 10 and then there are nine even letters. So let's look at the odd letters. M, O, N, D, H, S, M, I, N, D. A month's mind. And a month's mind is a mass for the dead, which is held one month after a person's death. So month's mind is the answer there. Um, then number eight, we only have two more to go. Reportedly outstanding distilled drink that's made out of sugarcane and wheat. Okay, well, uh, reportedly, uh, refers to hearing, something you hear. So, it's, it can clue a sound like word. So that would mean that we are looking for something uh, meaning outstanding, distilled drink that's made out of sugar cane, and then wheat, in the end, would be the definition. Well, this part is probably easiest to get, the distilled drink that's made out of sugar cane, well, rum is made out of sugar cane, so we need a word for outstanding that we can put rum at the end of, and then that sounds the same as wheat. A word for wheat. Well, durum is a type of wheat, which is spelled like this. Durum wheat. And that has the ram in the end. So, what is outstanding here? It's not outstanding as in great. It's more like outstanding as, as, is, as if uh, a debt is outstanding. It is due. So it would be do rum, 
and then that sounds like Durham. So that's a homophone of Durham. And then let's look at the last one. Vehicle that's paid for in Brazilian currency. New Tesla? Question mark. Well, a vehicle has uh, quite a few like short synonyms: car, bus, van, things like that. So it's use useful. It's useful as a component for for uh, of a longer word. But Tesla question mark can can that define something? Uh, let's see, Brazilian currency. Well, the Brazilian currency is the real, R E A L. So uh, that's four letters. In that, in is an indicator that in some inside something is the other thing. Very straightforward. So in real, we have new Tesla. And we would get vehicle that's paid for. Well, a rental is a vehicle that's paid for. So that is a real with the N. And N can be an abbreviation for new. I think from from like maps or something. If you look at look up N in the dictionary, you can see new there. And why is T Tesla? Well, uh, Tesla um, is a unit in in the metric system named after Nikola Tesla, and that is uh, its abbreviation is T, the standard abbreviation for Tesla. So that's why T can include Tesla. So NT inside real, and we get rental. And that is all the all the sort of uh, answers we need for the word chain. Now let's try to put these in order. Remember, we need um, we need each uh, each answer to be followed by something that starts with the same letter. So this looks good. Bacon and New Year. Are there any other options? Not no uh, no other word starts with N. So it looks like this is going to be a pair here. And uh, let's see if we have something that can't be paired. So we have S ending, nothing ends with S, actually. We don't have a word here that ends in S. So that should indicate that scrub is the first word, because it can't follow another word. Now, scrub can be followed by bacon, because it start with, starts with B. But no other word starts with B, so that's that looks promising. And this new year comes after that, because no other word ends, uh, starts with N. Now, what starts with R? It's either this reverend or this rental. So we have two options. Now, what goes after after this reverend? We have a D. So again, two options. Maybe go we'll look at that last. Try to uh, limit the options in another way. So let's see, rental. Uh, let me see my screen whether, whether I have room to this down so reverend okay they all fit so reverend and rental and uh, starts with rental ends with l so we need a word that starts with l we only have one option that's the locker so we put that after the rental and now we need another word that starts with an r and now this reverend is the only option so reverend is the only thing that can uh, follow locker and we already know that reverend uh, will not be the last word because note that we ha still have a still have a word ending in n and we don't have any words that start with n we already used the new year or another way to look at it is we need two words to start with n because we have two words ending in n and we only have one word starting with n meaning that the chain will end with this n so that means that after locker we need something and reverend is the only thing that goes there. So put reverend inside that and that fixes the, the problem of this new year because now reverend can't go both after new year and locker. So now rental goes after new year. 
after reverend we have either dedication but it can't be dedication because remember we don't have anything to follow the end here so it has to be durum after durum something starting with m that's month's mind that uh, ends with d and dedication is the last word so this is the the correct order for the word chain now where do we insert it let's open the the field nonogram again so this is the grid and remember we are starting uh, where's my grid here we are starting at this one here and we are ending here so what's the shortest way to uh, go through this maze to get get here well this is going to be very straightforward we go here just mark this white so we know where to put the the letters will go here and there aren't great options to branch off right go here all the way here and hopefully this is the correct path now let's fill in the words that we have so we had scrub bacon new year uh, let me just put in the numbers here not numbers but uh, this calls the number so scrub follow the path of this and now remember we need only one b this has to be shared so it's bacon like this new year's sharing the n and then we needed rental and locker share the l again And then Reverend and Durham and Durham sharing the D months mind and dedication. So now if you look at the grid here, maybe you can already see where the where the final answer comes from. Congratulations, we filled it correctly. Okay, so where do we get the final answer then? Well, we did this nonogram to to form a maze, right? So these blacks are walls, but what are the reds doing? Well, if we look between the reds, we can see something spelled out. So between these reds, we have the word seven. Between these words, we have the word colored. And between these words, we have the word earths. And seven colored earths. Sounds like that is going to be our answer. And if you look up what that is, remember we were looking for an island with sand dunes. So let me. Uh, grid out of the way here so seven colored earths it's a geological formation in Mauritius so these uh, colored sand dunes so that is our final answer that is where Gladys is this time around now uh, this had a couple of things going on Note that we had a, a repetition of these cryptic clues, and if you are sort of tired of cryptic clues already, well, I have some good news and some bad news. So episode four will not have a, a cryptic clues. It will be a different type of crossword, sort of fill the blanks thing. So you have to find a word that's missing in the clue. And we are also going to solve a statue park puzzle. That's the good news. The bad news is there are going to be other uh, cryptic crosswords in this in this series, just because that's that's the puzzle type that I'm really familiar with and uh, I like doing. So sorry about that if you are not into cryptics, but if you're like me and you like them, then look forward to that. So yeah, um, episode four uh, will come up next. 
like I said, statue park and fill the blanks crossword. And that is going to be called From Before Caesar. And uh, I will see you in that episode. And for this one, this is all. Thanks.